Welcome back. This is part three of subtopic 2.2. We're going to look at this science understanding. The final equilibrium concentrations and hence position of equilibrium for a given reaction depends on various factors. What we're going to need to be able to do is predict and explain using Leisha Talia's principle, the effect on the equilibrium position of a system of a change in the concentration of a reactant or product, overall pressure of a gaseous mixture, or temperature of an equilibrium mixture for which the delta H value for the forward or back reaction is specified. So what is Leach Italia's principle? Firstly, this principle is named after Henry Louis Leach Italia, who's a French chemist. And back in 1884, he proposed that equilibrium systems tend to compensate for the effects of stresses that are placed on them. We can define Leach Italia's principle as this, if a stress, which could be a change in pressure, temperature or concentration, is applied to a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium will shift to counteract this stress. Let's firstly look at concentration changes and effects on a system at equilibrium. So we're going to consider this reaction here, which is the formation of HCl. And let's just consider if we were to increase the concentration of chlorine gas when the system was at equilibrium. If the concentration is increased for Cl2, we can say that the equilibrium is going to shift to try and relieve this increase in the concentration of Cl2. And so it will tend to favor the reaction that will act to decrease its concentration. And if we look at the reaction itself, then we know that it's going to be the forward reaction that utilizes Cl2 as well as H2 to go and produce HCl. So we can say that the uh, system will favor or the equilibrium will favor the forward reaction. Another way of saying that is the equilibrium will shift to the right. So that's in the forward direction itself. One crucial point with this to note is that the Kc value doesn't actually change when concentration changes. So the equilibrium is adjusting to try and re-establish this Kc value and re-establish this equilibrium. For our second example, we're going to consider the same reaction, but just a different change. In this case, we're going to look at an increase in the concentration of HCl. So this increase is going to cause a stress on the system at equilibrium. The equilibrium will want to shift to relieve this increase. So it will favor the reaction that will act to decrease it. And from our equation here, we can see that will favor the backward reaction. So another way of saying that is that the equilibrium will shift to the left and then it will favor the backward reaction. So we can summarize this information. So given that we've got a general reaction where a reactant or reactants go to produce products and vice versa, we can summarize it as this. Uh, if you've got an increase in reactant concentration, equilibrium will shift to the right to decrease it. Conversely, a decrease in reactant concentration will cause equilibrium to shift in the opposite direction to try and increase that concentration. And we can do the same thing for the products. We're going to now consider pressure changes, but keep in mind that this is only for gaseous systems. So we're going to consider this reaction of N2 and uh, three lots of H2 to produce two NH3. We could summarize this reaction by saying that one mole or molecule of N2 reacts with three moles, or three molecules of H2 to produce two moles or two molecules of NH3. If we count the number of molecules or moles on each side of the equation, we should be able to see that the reactant side has more moles or more molecules compared to the product side. So we've got one N2 and three H2, so four moles or molecules on the reactant side, and then only two moles or two molecules on the product side. So this is going to be a determining factor to how the equilibrium position will change. So example one, with this reaction being considered, if we were to say, increase the pressure, and we could do that by reducing the volume of the container of this gaseous system, so this will result in more collisions of the gas particles with the container. That's what results in the increase in pressure. We know that the equilibrium will want to shift to try and decrease this pressure 
and to do so it's going to favour the reaction which has fewer moles or fewer molecules and this will then ensure that fewer collisions will take place with the container which will then decrease the pressure. So looking at this uh, equation here we can see it's the right hand side that has fewer moles so we could then suggest that equilibrium will shift to the right, favour the forward reaction and this will reduce the pressure. Like with concentration changes, the Kc value does not change with pressure changes. For our second example, again with the same reaction, we're going to look at a decrease in pressure. So we can do that by increasing the volume of the container, that meaning fewer collisions with the container. Equilibrium will shift to favour the reaction that will now have more moles or more molecules on their side of the equation. So we know this is going to be products to reactants or the backward reaction. We can therefore say equilibrium will shift to the left and favour the backward reaction. And again, KC does not change, it just gets re-established. Here's a diagram to summarise the information from the previous two slides. So if we were looking at decreasing pressure here by increasing the volume. So with a lower pressure, we know that it's going to favour the reverse reaction that has more moles or more molecules. So we can see a much higher concentration of reactants in this side. If we then look at increasing the pressure by enclosing it into a smaller volume, then it's going to favour the forward reaction because it has fewer moles or fewer molecules. So we'll have more of our products within this reaction mixture at equilibrium. So a question now, what if the number of moles of gas on both sides were equal? Well, in this case, it can't really favour the forward or backward reaction because it's not going to actually help relieve um, the pressure or help increase the pressure depending on what change that we've uh, assigned. So the answer is, if there are equal moles of gas on both sides, the equilibrium position will not actually change with a pressure change because both sides essentially change to the same magnitude. We can summarise this information in this table here. So an increase in pressure will cause the equilibrium to shift in the direction with fewer moles to decrease the pressure. And then in contrast, a decrease in pressure will cause the equilibrium to shift in the direction with greater moles to increase the pressure. Thirdly, we're going to look at temperature changes. So temperature changes apply to equilibrium reactions that are either endothermic or exothermic. And to just recap this, we know endothermic reactions absorb heat energy from their surroundings. We can say that the value for delta H is going to be positive for the forward reaction. That essentially means delta H is negative for the backward reaction because it's the complete opposite. Exothermic reactions, instead of absorbing heat energy, release heat energy to the surroundings so they get warmer. And delta H is negative for the forward reaction. Take note that this is the only time that Kc actually changes. So when temperature changes, the value of Kc will change. And we investigated that just at the start of this video. To look at temperature changes, we're going to consider this reaction here. So this should look quite familiar from topic one. We've got nitrogen reacting with oxygen to produce nitric oxide. And we're told here that the value for delta H is positive 88 kilojoules per mole. Let's firstly consider if temperature is increased. So we know that using Lichtertalia's principle, the equilibrium will shift to try and decrease the temperature. And so to do this, the equilibrium will shift to favor the endothermic reaction because we know endothermic reactions absorb heat energy from their surroundings. We can see based on this equation up the top here that delta H is positive for the forward reaction. This is the endothermic reaction. So having said that, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right and this will occur until a new equilibrium is established. This occurs because essentially the concentration of our product, nitric oxide, will increase. The concentration of nitrogen and oxygen will decrease. And if we were to substitute this into our Kc expression, then we should realise that the value of Kc will actually increase because we've got an increase in the product concentration and a decrease in the reactants 
concentration. So Kc increases in this case here. For our second example, again with the same reaction, we're now going to consider a decrease in temperature. So we know that the system is going to try and relieve this by increasing the temperature, and it's going to do that by favouring the exothermic reaction. We already know the forward reaction is endothermic, so that means the backward or reverse reaction is exothermic. So equilibrium is going to shift to the left until a new equilibrium is established. And using a similar point here, we would notice that the concentration of the products will decrease and the concentration of the reactants will increase. This will then result in our value for Kc decreasing. So at lower temperatures, we've got a lower Kc value. We can summarise these changes in a table. So if our stress is an increase in temperature, then the equilibrium will shift in the direction that favours the endothermic reaction to try and decrease the temperature. That could either be the forward or backward reaction. A decrease in temperature will cause equilibrium to shift in the direction that favours the exothermic reaction to try and increase the temperature. And again, that could be the forward or backward reaction. One more final thing that isn't covered in the science understanding are catalysts. So we want to consider what effect they may have on a system at equilibrium. And long story short, catalysts have no effect on the position of the equilibrium, i.e. the yield. And that's because catalysts themselves only act to speed the rate of the forward and back reactions equally so that equilibrium is achieved faster. So it doesn't actually affect the concentrations or amounts of reactants and products. It just changes how quickly it gets to equilibrium. 